Yeah, afternoon. Thanks for coming along to uh, what is uh, used to be McColl's news agents, but it's now each what studio. Um, and this is um, a very kind of uh, low key, just a way of uh, saying these are some pieces of work from a book that um, Julia Rose Lewis and I have, have put together. Collaboration. Yeah. There may be more to come. Yeah. This is uh, this is the book. Um, should we tell them a bit about what, how we did, what we did? Yeah. You basically swooped in and rescued me. <laughs> I had this um, massive archive of images from a very painful journey in my life that was just sitting on my computer. And I kept thinking, someday I'm going to edit them and it's going to turn into a piece of visual poetry book and I kept thinking this and thinking this and thinking this and years went by and I was wasting huge amounts of memory on my computer and in the cloud getting nowhere and during the pandemic Paul reached out to me and said hey what are you doing are you doing any of this po and I said well I've got this massive archive that is utterly overwhelming me and I can't make heads or tails of and he very generously said Oh, I'd love to have a look at that. That sounds fun. <laughs> Paul's glutton for punishment, I think. And he said, he looked at them and he said, you know, I have a similar archive from traveling. Perhaps we should exchange what we have and see if we can come up with something together because in teamwork we will be less overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what happened. So we swapped this archive of photos. Mine was from an equally. Uh, in the mail, yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm glad we got that clear. Um, it was a particularly uh, uh, what's the word volatile emotional situation that I was in when I was in America, and they were photos of my travels up and down. Uh, the states and so yeah we both had this archive of photos of times when we really kind of struggled with things so we swapped them and we took it into well we Julia did stuff to my photos and I did things to hers and blow me down after a while um, this uh, Bear Bois Press in Ireland um, foolishly asked or offered to publish a, a, a book of 30 of the works. It's an ongoing piece. There'll be another book later this year. Uh, but, um, yeah, so it's it's visual, visual work. And uh, as much as I'd like to try and perform it, um, I think it might be a good to, um, what's the word? Uh, yeah, well, but that's the reason why we're not. But we've got some friends who have generously said they would come and do their own fairly experimental out there kind of things, which is fantastic. Um, and um, so Mr. Peter Yeager, uh, who we have here, is going to come and um, play some improvised sounds. That is Peter, you're on. That's <laughs> nice <laughs>
Finished and uh, do have a look or not, but uh, we have yes, yeah, we have prints for sale. You have a variety. You can find one that matches whatever you're wearing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Very cool. Fantastic. So, um, reading next uh, is um, Heart and Crime, Sarah Scott. For this. So I'm just going to read you three um, poems today. Um, they're of my darker ones. Um, uh, okay. Escarabacus escapan de su boca. Strings come from my eyes. They spread across the room and out of the window, turning into wires. My grey eyes cry mercury. It runs down the silver strands, dripping into oily slips by the old garages. Lights flash fire. The flames spread, spread up the garden path, roaring towards the house. The doors always open and shut very fast, slamming for the fun of it. I open my mouth, black beetles escape. Crawl all over my body, the house sighs, cracking mortar, the house starts to turn again, thundering as it rips through the earth. Oh, house, my wires will get tangled. The house is disrespectful. It turns a full 360 degrees. My beetles run down in all directions. They trail down the wires, hundreds from my mouth, nipping at my lips. Cool in the chattering clippers, hide the wires. A face, a question, how was your day? Um, and this one um, is called Poison. Pray that you may live your life as best you can and lead your destined life more happily than your own father. Oedipus the King by Sophocles. Scene one. I walked straight in through those tangled gates. Machinery parts reached out from the dirt and rubbish. Empty shells of buildings reflected in the oily pools of leaked chemicals. Crumbling chimneys loomed. I waited until I heard the sound of his sleeping voice reverberating. Down the lead pipes, rattling the fragments left in shattered windows. A token from his once industrial citadel. I bowed a shard of glass and searched the urine scented halls until I found his sleeping body on a sh shock of ragwort. I planned to stand and watch him to map the pitch and swell of his chest, but I kneeled and kissed his temple. My lips turned blue and the devil slipped into me. My own father, I didn't mean to do it, blood sprayed out, covering his yellow bed of flowers. Scene two, hunger. I held his filthy heart up. Its silhouette sent a chill through the gulag sky. I put it to my mouth and fed. I ate that bastard's heart piece by piece, lacerations and rot through his body to the dogs. The blackness of his heart sickened me. I lay in my own vomit, cowering, as the wild dogs licked me clean. I cried for the loss of his body, dreamt every plastic night that he was smashing through doors again, 
trying to speak to me. Fish has appeared in the empty warehouse walls, whispering unspeakably dark words to me. I strain to listen. Oxidized railings rattle. Wind howled through crisscross fences. I should never have killed that man. Scene three, unforeseen. There were secret signs, broken benches smirked and laughed at multitudes of empty lager cans, broken radios play, love me do. I wanted to scrape his blood out of my veins. I looked at the delicate patterns of scars on my hands, reminisced at the games we used to play, his nefarious pleasures. The blind eye of my mother always turned away, the twisting threads tightened until I couldn't feel the drip, drip, drip from all my hurting parts. In time, I unbound every slicing yarn. With each release, I felt some brittle part of me soften until the evening light illuminated the dark memory of his face. I started to understand what he was trying to say to me. The pylons buzzed to the blackening night as a carrier bag caught the breeze and was lifted into the sky. Very small font. Okay, this is called cool. Nasty Stitch. I got a nasty stitch, a nasty, nasty stitch, an asty it, an asty, nasty it, a tasty tit, a dotted batch, das ik bit, a dot ted batch, das leben und it, a dotty bat, das leben und uns, a spotted pot, unser set summer leben, some nasty potty spit, on pasty face, my tasty date, my tasty bait, O mas tit bait, O mas debata, mo a mas a mit, ma masas, a martas a mant, botched, bitched, book it, bat it, nook spit, look at, lick it, ick, ick, spat, i a mas itch, a man stitch, das lieben, und a martas, acorn tree, foot snooze, owning sight, sweat, Crotch eats snot meat rot. I've got a nice batch. It's coming free. Asti it be. It's a drastic pass on to Seltzama Lieben, a spotted pot, amo amas, mamamas, amatas, amant. Ice pot, rice plate, twitchy, witchy woo, a mowing it, amassing it. I've got a nasty stitch. A twit, a bit of a mowing a martus. Lick it. Ick, ick, spat. A mass itch, a mass stitch. Das Leben und a martus. Seahorse, spoof store, rowing tea.
thank you very much for uh, helping us bring this uh, little collaboration together. Um, I think we maybe have one book for sale, but we've got uh, 13 and a half boxes of print. <laughs> a big thank you to um, well, to Julia for being part of the collaboration. Really. And of course to Mr. Pete Yeager, Andreas Handwater, and of course Sarah Scott. And thank you all for coming up.